In this video, we're going to talk about three reasons why camping doesn't help you in Dead by Daylight. So, let's get into it. So before I get into the reasons, there's a couple things we need to dis discuss. We all know camping sucks, but I'm going to get more into it. So watch this video and learn more about camping and why it doesn't help you, number one. And number two, also stick around to the end of the video for bonus reasons as well. So camping as a killer hardly ever works out for killers, whether, you know, whether it comes to getting kills, uh, points, or just learning to improve as well. Like, just camping for you is just not in favor for you regardless. It could be fun at the time. I mean... Yeah, sure, but in reality, it's just not fun for you, and it's not fun for the survivors. So, against reason number one. Reason number one is you never get better at the game to get more hooks, which getting hooks in general gets you more points as a killer. So, for example, let's say you kill no survivors, but you get all the hooks. So that's two, four, six, eight hooks you can get in total, because obviously the third hook would kill them. So each survivor got two hooks, that's eight hooks. You would get, you would still get a shit ton of points because you're chasing, you're getting hooks, and you're getting hits, and whatever other abilities you're doing within the meantime, like, you know, brain breaking a pallet, or, you know, snuffing a totem, you know, whatever it is in that regard, right? So you're going to get points. You may not get one kill, but you'll probably get more points versus when you maybe get one kill, but you only got maybe, maybe four hooks in total spread out from all the survivors, or maybe you got two on one. And then like one on another and one on another, you know what I mean? Like whatever, which way you want to slice and dice it, you know, it's not going to work out for you. So you want to practice your chasing because the better you get at chasing, working around pallets, some mind games, that's going to that's gonna make you be better and rank up. You rank up, you get more blood points and all those things. Just you camp getting the first hook, camping him and roll, patrolling around, just looking at him, waiting to get to hit another survivor. It's not, it's not really going to help you at all so you not getting better hurts you long term especially you know if you want to get better at the game if you don't want to get better then yeah i mean do you you know what i mean it is what it is all right so number two is a mood killer so when i say my mood killer for the survivors it's like let's say you're playing a survivor because most people they don't just play killer they usually play survivor you know they play both i play both personally myself and don't get me wrong some people just play you know killer and they don't play survivor at all there are some people like that but i would argue that most people play both maybe survivor more maybe killer more sure but most people at least played both and you should play both because it helps you it, it playing as a killer and never playing a survivor and then playing survivor without killer it, you learn more about the game itself and how to you know counter certain killers and how to deal with certain perks as a killer that survivors have so it helps you in the long game but one, that's another video. So, you know, let's say you're a survivor, you're working on the gen, and the two other guys are doing gens, and one guy gets hooked, and he's just standing there. They're just like, oh, well, he's camping, so I'm not going to get the guy. And the hook is like, oh, well, this sucks. And then some people might just quit. That's how it used to be back in the day before they added the penalty, right? So it's just a mood killer for the survivor. He might quit. Then you get a little blood points for the quitting. But then the killer is just like, oh, well, he quit, so I'm going to go do it again. And then it's just like, it's it's boring. It's a mood killer for the survivor. It's like, oh, this game is whack. Like, you're not playing it for the way it's supposed to be played. And then there are certain situations where you might camp in general. Sure, absolutely. But not, you get the first hook and just camp. And just stand there. Just standing there. Like, it, it's not in your favor to do that. You lose points and all this other stuff. So it's a mood killer for, for, for the survivors. You know, and it's just overall morale of the game. Like, it's boring. It sucks. It just sucks for everybody. All right, so let's get on to number three. Number three is you lose points. So, you know, if you were to read the different badges that you get at the end of the game as a killer, one is definitely um, being around hooks. And the hooks is like, you know, getting hooks and just staying around the hook of the hook survivor. You lose points over time as you do that. So you don't gain that was those points. So you play the game like, yeah, you're just playing the game. Maybe you're having fun. You use like the camp to just camp for whatever reason is. But I would say the more reason is is just to get the kill rather than for anything, you know. But like I said, you know, you lose points within that rank. So you might not rank up if you want to rank up. This is for people who do want to rank up and do want to get better at the game. So within that, you don't want to lose points. You want to gain points. You want to be at least in the gold or red you know, when it comes to the four different badges of that. So, you know, you don't want to, you know, lose points in that regard. So that's, so that's number three. All right. So 
hopefully been watching videos this whole time i appreciate you don't forget to comment subscribe all that good stuff if you like this content let's get into the last one so the last one is let's say you get the first hook right and you camp that guy you they might do all five gens and you might not even get that kill Especially if they're running borrowed time. But let's just say they're not borrowed time. If they're body blocking you, by the time you hit, you got that brief pause. They can get the unhook. And then the other guy can just block you, keep blocking you. He, You hit him. They might all run out. You know, there's a couple different snares. Like around, there could be adrenaline in play. What if that, the hook star has adrenaline and all the things are done. He gets art off the hook. He gets a sprint burst. He gets the sprint burst, basically. And he's fully, he's fully healed from a hurt state, you know, from an injured state to a healthy state. So you might not be able to get him again, even though he's on the second state of the hook. And if the survivors just work together, you're not going to get that kill. Most likely, will there be sometimes you will? Sure. But I would argue in most cases, you won't even get that kill. So you spent all that time camping him, waiting for him to die. They did all the gens. You lost points. You're not getting better. You're killing the morale of the game. And you don't even get that one kill. That one kill you don't even get. So it's like, those are just the reasons, you know. Or three, you know, three or four reasons of why you should encamp as a killer. Are there certain situations where you might want to, depending on what's going on in the game? I would say maybe mid to late game. Yeah, I, I would say there are some some cases where you might want to like patrol, but not just face camp with a hook. It's like right in front of you, just staring at it like a weirdo. But yeah, you know, there could definitely be certain uh, situations where that could be viable. But we're not talking about that. So. If you enjoyed the video please like comment subscribe let me know what you think and if you think i should add more to this or you think there's other reasons or maybe you just love camping let me know whatever comment you want to add i'm all for it take care